Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Burchette, and I have three tips for you today from a buddy of mine who lost 50 pounds. Tips you can apply to your own weight loss journey or just your own life and being your best. I'm really proud of John. He's lost 50 pounds, like I said, in a year and a half that we've been talking together. And I respect his courage in doing this interview in talking about what has made the difference. And there's three things that I wanna point out to you now. Number one is what I would call getting back up after you fall down. He calls this shortening the cycle. You mentioned just a second ago, you've gotten better. The slip ups still happen. They're not totally gone. Yeah, I don't call them controlled detonations, you know, holidays, <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> it is, it's like controlled demolition. But what, what it is, is the cycle shortens. It's like, okay, I'm gonna go off, but I'm gonna focus on picking back up and not blaming myself and holding myself to such a ridiculous standard going like, you know what, it's go enjoy yourself. You're going to lose a little ground. Don't worry about that. That's fine. You don't have to have, you know, 900 consecutive days of weight loss. That's not how it works. People who tend to succeed at this don't see it as black and white. So one slip up is not complete failure. The quicker that you can get back on track and get back to your plan, get back on your diet, get back to exercising, the better. We're all human, we're gonna mess up, we're gonna slip up. The quicker you can get back, the quicker you can be successful. Number two is he gets into some real shit. This is not just about macros and calories and carbs, although those things are essential to losing weight and getting the results that you want. But he gets into depression and how he, working with a therapist, identified that there are some times when he goes through lows. Sometimes they're triggered and sometimes they're just random. And understanding his pattern of self-medicating where he felt bad and so he would eat to feel better, comfort, or he would medicate with alcohol and both of those would take him off track of his weight goal. You know, around the fall of last year, I started another slide. So I think it was around the time we went to the Notre Dame Georgia game. And I, when I came back to Seattle, I had some other travel to do. And by the time I, I got back, I just, I couldn't refocus. It was just, I was just kind of in a, a lull. And that was when I also started to open up to the fact that sometimes I go through depression bouts. Like, it just happens. I think it's happened for a lot of my life, and I've just never, like, been cognizant of it. So I would treat it in very unhealthy ways. You would medicate it. Oh, yeah. Alcohol, food, all sorts of things. And that, yeah, now now that it's, uh, you know, the old Mr. Rogers line, if it's mentionable, it's manageable. So, you know, I see a professional about it. I, you know, I talk it through. I don't go back to those, you know, unhealthy habits as much because I know what I'm dealing with and I'm okay with it. I like that when he talked about this, you can see he's comfortable with it. He's come to terms with part of his humanity. This is part of his existence right now. And it's okay. And I think that kind of acceptance can help him let go of it a little bit. I bet it helps him recover a little bit faster. I think that's an incredible amount of insight. And I would turn that around on you and I ask you, what holds you back from your own goals? How do you self-medicate in healthy or maybe not so healthy ways? The third thing is he really is taking it one step at a time. There's a tendency of people to want to overhaul their entire life and start a whole new diet and, and the seven day a week exercise program and, and everything. And for most people, it's too much. It's just too much change. And it doesn't stick in the long term. And what we talk about in this interview is how for him, he'll take one little habit, eating or starting to walk for five or 15 minutes. And he'll do that for a week or two until he feels like he's gotten into a routine. He's, he's got it ingrained and that it, it is more of a habit before he goes on to do something else. That's great, I think people feel overwhelmed sometimes, they can't do it all, which is a great signal from your body that you're doing too much and you need to do it one step at a time. Like I was always in a mode of, ah, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back on this, we'll find a, find a good time. And yeah. I was always looking for a solid chunk of time where I was gonna be in one place for you know a few months, basically to where I can strip everything out, all the other distractions out, mm. and focus, you know, kind of like, you know, strip the studs and rebuild from scratch. And, yeah, you keep you know, mentioning focus a lot. It sounds like that's what you yeah. kind of well, put your and, attention on. Right. And so it's it was mostly to build routine to where it wasn't taking brain power or willpower to do something. It was a 
I'm going to do this one thing every day. I'm not going to worry about checking off these other 19 things I should be doing. Let's put those to the side for now. We'll get to those. Give me some more examples on how you focus on one thing at a time. Give me some examples of the one thing. Honestly, it's silly stuff sometimes. It's, okay, we're going we're gonna to have the routine where you're doing the dishes every night and everything is like locked down before you go to bed and it's kind of a routine at the end of the day. Now, I don't feel right if I don't get those things done. But I feel a lot better in the morning when all of it's, I don't have to worry about it. Nothing's piling up on me anymore. So it's in the details of a lot of this stuff. And it's in that kind of fine grain, like, just to start, like, making your bed every morning is one of those things that just kind of sets that tone in your head of, I don't feel like a slob day. You know, it kind of, it, it, it sets a high bar for you. It's really interesting. How to lose weight, start by making your bed. But I think you're right about, you're, I think you're so right. I, the great thing that I love about habits is it's autopilot. Yeah. Build in that habit. It just runs. And, and the cool thing about it, you know, that you're seeing, you, know, you put these habits in and you, you start losing weight. You can't get it all at once. But once the habit starts going without as much effort, it's not as hard, then you can yeah. kind of get more excited and be like, okay, I got this. If you think about what you can accomplish in a year or two, with just adding, you know, small changes one step at a time, it's incredible. The biggest obstacle for me was to actually figure out that I was doing this because I love myself, not because, you know, I want to look like Thor or, you know, like anything like that. It was, it was because, no, I want to do this because I owe it to myself and it's, you know, I like me. And that was kind of the bigger, I think, psychological hurdle. It's so true. In so many ways, each one of us is often our biggest ally and friend and coach and inspiration and the biggest thing that holds us back. So there you go. There's his three keys for how he lost 50 pounds and is going to keep going. I think that's great to apply to your life and for you being your best. Give me some comments, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time.